You're listening to the What's Happening Podcast with Gary Watts. Good morning, everyone. I'm here with Whitney Russell, and we're just going to talk about whatever. Whitney, hey, Gary. how are you? I'm <laughs> well. How are it's you? It's so good to see you. It's a treat to it's be with you. It's been a while. How many years or months or um, a decade? It hasn't been that long. No, no, no. I think I started in real estate eight years ago. No kidding. With your company. Um, where I literally, it was like, um, intensive. It was like an intensive course in Crazy. real estate. Yeah. Did I have gray hair then or, or not? Yes. Well, you've always had the fresh, <laughs> the fresh white locks. You know, I try to diet. No, I'm, I don't. No, I you just don't. And go. you shouldn't cause you're a silver fox here. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about, talk a little bit about, uh, uh, your family. Yes. I know you're married to Ben. You have two children. Let's yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself and yeah. your family. Um, so I live in Iowa City with my okay. husband, Ben Russell. He grew up here in Iowa City, went to Regina, good old naughty Catholic boy. All right. And just how I like him. Yeah. And uh, we have two kids now. So we have Ford Russell. He's four years old and he's a card. He's super extra. Um, he's really into construction. Really? And yeah, anything, trucks, anything like that. Um, and he loves music and dancing. And really? he's his mother's son. Does he keep you busy? Um, a hundred percent. We could be going all day long. He wants to always be doing something. So, um, and he's a delight. And then we have a baby who will be 10 months this month. Really? Poppy Ray, little Miss Poppy Ray. And she is a beautiful treasure. She is the easiest baby on the face of the earth. Like she slept through the night within the first couple months of her life. Great. And she's just cruising. She's just tolerating Ford Russell and living her life. And she's a dream. Yeah, they're so precious. Fun. And you have a dog or two? No. Oh my gosh. No, this I shouldn't is, have brought no, that up. No, you should have brought Sorry. it up. This is real life. <laughs> <laughs> you should bring it up because I don't want people to forget about my precious angels. Yeah. So Ben and I had two wonderful dogs from the Iowa City Animal Care and Adoption Center. Loves of my life. Many moons ago, I volunteered um, for the foundation, the Friends of the Animal Center Foundation. And I'm still on the board. I'm actually the president this year. Um, and... Uh, I, we adopted both of our dogs from the shelter. One was Jimmy Longlegs, man of my dreams. I got him before I even had Ben Russell. And I believe that he lived with me and waited for me to find my family and my pack. And then he passed on. So he died just this last year. And now we are. And then our other dog, Chi Chi, was this little bulgy eyed Shih Tzu that was like say the that world. again what type of dog a sh- you, Gary yeah, do, you have to, no. do we have to edit that uh, out no no <laughs> they are cute little things um, the, he's so, he was really sweet and yeah. we lost him during COVID um, and so now we're dogless and so we're desperate if anybody knows of a dog that wants to have a family with little children that's the difficult part a lot of times these dogs get anxiety over little kids, mm. you know, because they're um, they're so loud. Golden retrievers. Yeah. Oh, my they're gosh. They're fantastic. They're precious. Kids. And Labradors. Yes. Course, Labradors they're precious. Yeah. And Ben and I have a real big thing, like, I would just love to adopt, but maybe we'll get a puppy someday, too. I don't know. Right now, I feel like I have a puppy because I have a baby. Right. So that's a little yeah. tough, but... Um, man, kids need a dog, Whitney. Come on. I really believe that. You they know, do. I got frogs for Ford um, over the wintertime. Santa brought them. And um, they are African dwarf frogs, and they're just like little turds that hang oh. in the water. They don't really do anything. Like, oh, you need a dog so they can. We do it. desperately. So you're active in the, the dog shelter, aren't you? Yeah. Now, tell us about yeah. that. And tell us the needs and. Uh, oh, I would uh, love to. One of the things I just got before you get into that, I, yeah. I had a lady who came in with domestic violence. It was a fantastic uh, podcast. I mm-hmm. thought, and they're in the process of raising money for domestic violence, yes. and part of the building that they're building right now and i think it's underway was they're going to have a huge area for pets oh i love that and and a lot of people won't leave a relationship if it's if it's they're having issues correct well what do we do with the pets correct and i think they even have it set up where they can have more than just dogs i mean cats that's amazing all kinds of different pets that's amazing now they've got it so in the middle of the night you need to leave you got you got you can bring your pets into the shelter i think that's incredible and i know that um A few years ago, back before I came back on the board. So I was the president when the shelter was built, right before I started at Watts Group. Right right by the river. Yes, yes. Um, South side of town. And we raised a million dollars for that building. This town is very generous when it comes to animals. Animals and children, right? They're just precious. And um, I remember uh, we sort of shifted our model a little bit at the Friends of the Animal Center Foundation to not just give directly to the shelter, but maybe other organizations in the community that might need a little extra help. 
um, that, that would meet our guidelines, right? So domestic violence intervention program was one that we um, gave some funds to. Last year, we were able to give um, some money to the animal um, food bank at uh, Community Crisis Center. Um, and the thought behind that is it, it's it's a really minimal amount compared to how much we raise, and we have a huge commitment to the shelter. Um, I I don't know if I can quote on this, but I think it's like 160000 a year is what we give to the shelter is what our commitment is, and then maybe additional beyond that. Um, so, you know, the idea is a lot of people will bring their animals to the shelter if they don't have the money to feed them. And so we're trying to keep animals out of the shelter, obviously. Um, our shelter is, to me, incredible. Um, we are a low-kill shelter, not a no-kill shelter. And this is what I want people on this podcast to know. No-kill shelters are dangerous. And why I say that is because if you say, I'm not going to kill any animals, you need to consider a couple different things. Number one, the quality of life of the animal. You can pump all the money in the world into that animal, but is their quality of life going to be good? And the foundation will pay for medical care, right? So um, the shelter is actually owned and operated by the city, um, and it's under the police department with the animal care and um, control, control, animal yeah. control, thank you. Um, and so you have to consider the animal's quality of life. And then is it dangerous to the community? You know, there are some animals that unfortunately we try to rehabilitate and help, and they're simply a danger to the community, um, other animals or people in general, and we simply can't. It's not okay. And so the shelter has to make some really difficult decisions out there, but I think that's something that is really important. Um, I think a lot of people have this perception that um, – we should be a no-kill shelter, but I think they don't really understand what that means. Right. You know what I mean? And so we will do everything in our power to rehabilitate an animal. We've spent thousands of dollars on animals to help them. Um, and we have an incredible team of people with good knowledge that understand um, animals and what's going to be good for them. So. You know, uh, what I had uh, – uh, how do you adopt a pet? Tell Ooh. us about that. I mean, I, I've heard people adopt, and they got to fill out a form, and they got to yeah. actually interview. Yes. Which I think makes sense. Yes, yes. The folks that are taking Well, you want to make sure that the people that you're adopting to are responsible, understand animal care, um, and, and also how to, like, train an animal, right? You don't want somebody that's going to go in there and start beating dogs. Um, I mean, <laughs> like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You want somebody that can sit there and say, I understand that the best way to train an animal is by positive reinforcement. They do something good, I give them a treat, right? Um so I think, uh, you know, just vetting those people and helping educate the public as well is really good. They want to make sure that people own their homes. Um, unfortunately, in August, as you probably know, as somebody that's in property management, um, in August, they get a huge influx of animals because people move out of their apartments and they can't take their animals with them. Okay. So they like people that are property owners um, or at least somebody that lives in a home that has a yard, you know. Um, things like that. And I can't speak specifically to what the, the shelter's um, policies are on that just because I'm more on the foundation side, but I know enough to be dangerous. Carrie. i got to throw you a sad story about a pet. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, it's a great story, but yeah. it's sad. So I, I, had, I saw a clip somewhere where two Marines walk into a funeral. Yeah. And they're walking in, in between is a dog, a German Shepherd. So it was probably one of those dogs they used, I think, in Afghanistan. Oh, God. You know, a lot, of times, a lot of times they... Uh, I don't know what they do, sniff bombs or how they yeah. work the, the, They're the incredible. dogs. They're incredible. And uh, the, the handler of it what, passed away, I mean, was killed. And so in uh, front of the uh, church, they had the casket with American flag, and the two Marines walk in just straight, perfectly looking good, and they're holding on to that dog, and the dog was just pulling them. And then they oh let God. it go at the very end. He jumped up to the casket and just put his paws up on the casket because he knew that was his hand. Yeah. One of the heaviest mm -hmm. things, and that tells you something about pets. Yes. The love for their, their, their owners. Yes. Unconditional love. You can have a bad day at work. You come home and they, they just want to play with you and lick you and have fun. <laughs> yeah. Just be their buddy. What What's yes. better than that? You could, you could, they, you could. It could be 20 below. They still want to play. Yes, completely. And they love you no matter what. They turn around. I mean, like you yell at them one yep. second and then you turn around and they just they love are. you. And to me, I think the bond is so interesting because it's like you never speak, but you know each other, right? You never have a conversation, but you know that animal and they know you. And they're just like... It's incredible. I got right? another pet story. I Tell should, me. This is no, I more, love you this. should be talking instead of No, no, of me. no. I like to hear <laughs> about the animals. So my uncle had a uh, Palomino horse. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. 
uh, that, that kind of that blonde color and any yeah. any any uh, wrote it in parades around the Des Moines area yeah. way back when, and it had a silver and black saddle and 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 the in the bridle and anyway. And when he had American flag, and he'd ride around, you just sit there, and it's just the most beautiful horse. Oh. Uh, but it was a magnificent horse, and, and I used to ride it when I was a little kid, and it would turn just based on the reins. You could just say canter, giddy up, and you'd do whatever, and you left, right, and, so and you could smart. just touch the. So anyway, he, he was way smart. And, yeah. and I'm a little kid up there, bouncer, as a full size horse. Oh. And uh, my uncle didn't even worry about it because he's, such a, he's so, such a great horse. Well, anyway, long story short, there was a storm coming up, and my uncle Glenn was going to go to uh, let the cattle out. He could, he could. They were rustling up against the fence, and so he had to ride out into the pasture. And they'd gathered up, and they were starting to g- gather into a, a gate. Yeah. And it, lightning's hitting, it's raining, and whatever. So he was out there trying to open that gate to let them out. He thought they'd bunch up. He just wanted to let them run in the pasture. And a lightning bolt hit, and the cattle got up against him, and they trampled him. They knocked him down, they trampled him, oh trying God. to get out. So next thing they know, uh, the, the thing that part of the thing that saved him was it was wet, mm-hmm. and when they trampled him, it was in mud, so they didn't quite, you know, it wasn't like you're on concrete or something. The horse, which his name was Topper, kept, when he, he was kind of knocked out, kept e- eating away at him or, or it putting his head underneath him. Got him so he could get back up. Oh my gosh! Got back on the horse, and the horse, and it took him all the way back to the house. And my aunt looked out, and then Glint kind of slumped over on the horse and fell off. She called an ambulance, and he had broken. He had a pretty well beat up, but that horse brought him back to the house. That's like out of a movie. Yeah, I mean, it should have been a movie. I'm sitting there. Are you kidding me? And you'd have to know the horse. I knew him as a little kid. Yeah. Just the most magnificent horse. That's a pet story. That's like Again. goosebump material, yeah. Gary. I mean, he was trampled. A storm was coming out. The cattle were bunt, whatever. Yeah. All the up against the gate. And Glenn got out, and they brought him back. And my aunt was in the house, looked up, and there's a horse with Glenn on it. Now, you think about that. Anyway. That's crazy. Enough on horses. but that's I, No, that's beautiful. They're just incredible. So, and I read a statistic the other day, and I wish I had come prepared with this. Um it was like, this is really crazy. In the 80s, it was a lower statistic of how many people had animals in their homes. Mm. It was like, I want to say in the 20s or 40s maybe. Um, and and today, 75% of homeowners have a pet. I believe that. Yeah, Why it's is good that? for you. Why is it, um, be- think? I think there's a lot of different reasons. Number one, I think a lot of people got pets during the pandemic, right? Oh, yeah, right? I agree. Um, and then I also think uh, it's just like a mental health thing. I think it's really good for you. Um, I know personally, I go home now and my house feels empty. I love my children to pieces and they're precious, but they're not the same as a dog, right? Another pet story. Yeah. Tell you me. Ready? Go. So Emily and I are doing the New York City Marathon. Yeah. Oh. We're on Staten Island getting ready to go and we're starting to get into the gates. You know, they yeah. heard you around like cattle. <laughs> yeah. And we walked up and here's a pen full of comfort dogs. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm about. like going, you know, because before the race, oh, how am I going to do? Do I have enough goo? You know, it's a long, it yeah. is kind of a long way. Yeah. <laughs> no we, kidding. And we get up there and here's these dogs and it was the most calming, relaxing thing. Yeah, it's incredible. That we, and it was so cool. I'm thinking, well, before a marathon, what a neat little thing to have. All, and everybody's in. Brilliant. We went and grabbed them and petted it. You see them at airports. Last the time hospital? I flew, hospitals, yeah. Hospital? Hospitals. Hospice. Yeah. Hospice. Oh, yes. You bring them into a nursing home. And all the people are just playing with a pet, and they love it because it reminds of their childhood. Yes. There's just so many cool things. And, and in an airport, you know, everybody's looking at their phones and stressed. Or, yeah, And totally. then you have those dogs walk around. You just want to just hug them. Oh, man, they should be everywhere, right? <laughs> I have um, – so, like, all of the miraculous child life specialists at the university, they take care of the children that are sick, right? Um, they have – these dogs now that will help take care of the kids in the children's hospital. Hmm. And um, I love all these people because I've literally helped like over half of them buy a house yeah. and they're just wonderful individuals. But these dogs are miracle workers. I mean, imagine being in a hospital and you're scared and then this beautiful dog comes in. What a, what a joy, even as a yeah. child, you know, that just, they're incredible. The work they can do is incredible. And like you were talking about, you know, in Afghanistan and stuff that they, they are 
miraculous creatures. We sponsored, uh, uh, through our foundation, we sponsored a, a dog for a service personnel to come back. And I love that. I don't know if they're suffering PTSD or whatever. They, I love whatever, that. They have issues. Yeah. And anyway, they train. These were Labradors. Yes. And they train them to be able to uh, help the veteran. And I thought, well, I got to do that. And yeah, lab, absolutely. And I love labs. Yeah. And they were white labs. One of our first dogs was a white lab. Oh. <laughs> so the neat thing about it was, was uh, we went to the uh, ceremony yeah. where they actually hand the dog off to the veteran. Did you cry? Uh, I'd be crying. Yeah. I mean, I was in the back <laughs> of the room going, Ugh. And it was so cool. There's so many feelings. Because they had the folks that worked it when they were puppies. to Because did, I didn't think they turned them over to like a year and a half, two-year-old dogs. I mean, yeah. they had to be... They're not just a, a brand new puppy. Hand them off. They have to train them. Yeah. Not only do they train the dog, they work with the veteran. That's beautiful. To be able to understand what that veteran needs. Yep. Yep. And there were three. Uh, what vet- is this organization called? This is uh, incredible. Yeah, definitely dogs or something about dogs. Okay. And I'll get it to you. Okay. But, yeah. Uh, it's a great. It, people should contribute to this. Absolutely. But they're expensive to train, but. Well, yeah. But they they that's who they live with. That's their partner now. Is that dog? Completely. And Completely. to help them through just life. Yes. So we're in the back of the room, and they're going through all their handlers, and their handlers are crying, and the veterans are up front. And they warned me. They all I I wanted to come to it really bad, and I wanted to see the dog, but I also wanted to talk to the veteran. Yeah. And they looked at me, and they said, no, just leave them alone. Let them enjoy the dog. Sure. And I thought to myself, you know, that makes sense. I don't want to go up there, hey, you know, I help sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they don't. And so at the very end, here's the dogs I bring them in, and they're – jumping around and then they handed him to those veterans and the veterans were handling them and petting them and playing with them and i'm like you're right it just about knocks you out mm-hmm. to see how much they love those veterans and how much those dogs were ready to perform but uh, just be their buddies yes and you know we don't do enough for our veterans no, in this country no we don't why and is it i don't Tell no. me why we don't. I don't know. These people sacrifice Makes their no lives. Sense. They live the rest of their lives with trauma and with just the heavy you load of doing of all of the. No, you've. I mean, your entire life, you're yeah. going to carry it with you. Right. You know, Especially and what if are, you're in combat. Or oh, in my gosh. If you're active awful. duty, it's horrendous. Yeah, right. Yeah. I can't even imagine. So I got let's get personal here, Gary. Okay, I got finally. Okay. I've been kind of waiting on this. <laughs> let's yeah. dig up the wound. Um so when I got Jim, I was a single woman living in a condo in North Liberty, and I was just like such a lonely person. You know, I didn't I wasn't dating. I lived by myself. Um, and I was out at the shelter one day and I think I was like balancing the books. This is back when the foundation had an office in the shelter. And um they were like, Oh, this little dog came in. Um and they had named him Ferrari. They said he was like an Italian sports car. And he had like the shape of an Italian greyhound, but maybe some chihuahua or something in him. He was like 12, 13 pounds. Um, a gift from Jesus, let me tell you what, Gary, this dog. I met him, and I went home, and I I thought on him, and I prayed on him, and I thought, oh, my gosh. I woke up the next morning, and I was like, I can't believe I'm getting a dog. It was just like it was this feeling I knew, right? So I got this dog, and this dog healed me, right? Like, I mean – I have lived with depression and anxiety my entire life. And I feel like I've done a pretty good job managing it for the most part. But, you know, it comes and goes. And it's like ups and downs. And don't even talk about the pandemic. and What a total, I don't want to have to beep this out, but show. Beep it out. It's fine. Um, (laughs) um, It was just like uh, crazy. And so this dog was like my partner, right? And I think um, people need to remember that, like, if you're lonely – you know, an animal can really help you, oh, yeah. you know, like they will, they will, he taught me how to love myself before I loved myself because he was unconditional love. Right. And we had this bond and I felt like we were just living life. I took him everywhere with me to the point where my husband, Ben, um, wh- how we met was we, we both worked at Hills Bank and, um, I went and Ben was on a softball team, like through the rec league. And he thought that Jim was my boyfriend because I would say every night, oh, I've yeah. got to go home to Jim. I got to yeah. let Jim out. You know, funny. I wanted to give him a man's name. Yeah. And so, uh, he thought Jim was my boyfriend for the longest time and finally asked somebody and they, they told him, but anyway, this dog, Gary, let me tell you something. And I'm not trying to make you cry, but I have to share the go story ahead. of how he died. I know that's really like sad, but, um, to me, it's very beautiful because I feel like it was a gift. So he got diagnosed with congestive heart failure, and they were like, he's going to live like 6 to 18 mm. months. And I was like, I know this dog. I know this dog. He's not living that long, you know. Um, 
he kind of stopped like eating food. And so I would make him just whatever. I was like, just eat whatever you want. You're on your last leg. Let's live it up. Right. Um, and the, the night that he passed, he was up all night and he was kind of hacking, you know, and he was having a hard time. And I was like, oh man, I think, I think I'm gonna have to take this dog to, um, go put him down the next mm-hmm. day. And, and he hates riding in the car. He had anxiety about that. And I was like, I really don't want to do that. So he was up all night and I was up all night with him. And finally, um, he, this is wild. He jumped up on the bed, crawled up onto me, put his little head on my chest and laid down. And I just said, it's okay, Jim, you can go. And he did. He did. Oh. Within like two minutes. That's heavy. It was unbelievable. That's the best way to go, though. I mean, it was beautiful because, I mean, was it horrible? Was I bawling? Absolutely. Yeah. But it was like he died in my arms and I was his person and yeah. we were in love. Yeah. And it was like a gift. And yeah. I feel such peace with it that I'm like, oh, this was the way it was meant to be. Yeah, that's and then cool. I, I, it was wild. I'm laying there with him. This was like an aha moment. And I turn over and the baby is in her bassinet with me. And um, she's smiling and looking at me. And I was like, man, life goes on, right? Yeah, it does. You just got to keep rolling, especially when you have kids, yeah. right? You just got to keep rolling and making it happen. So let's yeah. talk about can you imagine uh, just a little bit on the pandemic, but uh, yeah, can you imagine being a senior in high school? Okay, it's your I'm senior so year. grateful I didn't have kids during that. <laughs> It's your like, I mean, I year. did. I had a baby yeah. right at the beginning of it, and yeah. it was really rough. But yeah. to have kids in school, that would be horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. They were robbed. Football games, you can't. Uh, prom. Uh, cheer, prom night, homecoming. Graduation. You, you can't go. How do you go out for a date? How do you go to a movie? Correct. They yeah. were I mean, robbed. Or freshmen in college. Hey, this yeah. is your first year of college. You get the whole college experience. No, you don't. Sit at home. Get on a computer. Yeah. I can't. I, Excruciating. I of course, I'm old, but. I, you can do Zooms. Yeah, but it's not the it's same. It's not the same no. as like you and I are sitting here. How could we do this on a Zoom? No, you can't, How much Gary, fun would that be? Because I, to me, uh, you know, I just had this conversation with somebody about our board meetings. We're trying to bring them back in person. We have like a virtual option. But to me, you're not getting the engagement no. when you're not in no. person, right? No. I love human beings, and you're right. a people person, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that was like the hardest part yeah. about the pandemic yeah. for me was just Hard like. Hard on everybody. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah, so. Let's let's switch to uh, something I wanted to kind of talk about yeah. just for fun. Let's uh, uh, let's talk about your roots and let's go to Mount Vernon. Oh. We got to mention Mount Vernon. Where dreams and come I true. I want to talk about Mount Vernon, and yeah. then I want to talk about being an Iowan. Oh, I would love Iowa. to. I would love to. So let's start with Mount Vernon. Talk about okay. as a kid growing up. You yeah. went to school there. I grew up in Mount Vernon. Um, Great town fantastic town. town you know little cornell college is there and that affords that town a lot it's like a little tiny baby iowa city yeah. um one of the things i remember about mount vernon growing up there um was uh the library so we didn't have a public library we had the cornell library hmm. and it was amazing and i'm not really sure how that works like if the city contracts with them or what um but as a child, to go to the Cornell Library was like such a treat, Did right? Did you read? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I went to school. My degree is actually in English language and literature with a minor in creative writing. And what am I doing now? I'm selling real estate. But I feel like it translates to a lot of different things. It helps you think critically and helps you understand things, especially contracts, right? Um, but uh, How about contractors? Mm, maybe <laughs> not, but I do love contractors. Yeah. They're a treat. You know all about yeah. that. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah, Mount Vernon was, was a glorious place to be. And, uh, when I was growing up there, my big jam was theater. So I originally went to school for theater. I wanted to, um, get my degree in theater and then I wanted to be a stand up comedian. What was your first play? Um, Ooh, that's a great question. Hmm. Come on. And how old were you? Oh, I was 14 and I think I was the narrator. Brigadoon? Um, no, they did that like a couple <laughs> years before me, though. I loved See, that. See, was close, though, right? Yeah, I was in a bunch of different stuff in high school, though. Uh, we did, like, Music Man. Um, South Pacific. No, we didn't do South. That's a classic. <laughs> that's a classic. Like, all of the ones that they do in high school, they do Grease, right? I never yeah. did Grease, but that's a fun one. Um, I'm trying to throw you for a loop here. you got to go back to 14. You know, most most recently, though, well, this is this was like five years ago, the City Circle um, acting company of Cor- theater company of Coralville 
resident community theater here in Corville. They do all of their performances in the Corville Center for the Performing Arts. Mm, I did beautiful. Beauty and it's fantastic. It's, it is. And they do an awesome job. Like you would think it was professional theater. If you get an opportunity, check out citycircle.org. Um, and they have all their shows up. I think Sondheim is coming up here. But they also have a great youth theater, which I think is really great. To build confidence for kids, it's really important. Um, anyway, I digress. I was in Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. I was a, a townsperson. No, five years ago as oh. an adult woman. Um, and it was the time of my life. It was a great cast. We had so much fun. But in high school, yeah, I did all the theater. I did speech competition. You know, I went to state for really? improv. So how do you yeah. do that? Do they just you just stand up front and they, they throw out a topic? You got to. It was about really it? interesting. Oh, this is really. We should do that now. You and we I. Should, go, let's do it. Let's do a, a game. So we used to do this party game. So I was in a group of people and we did improv, right? And so, um, uh, I it was saw like them in Chicago three of my once. friends and some improv. It's the funniest. Like stuff. Second I, City, I, or yeah, yeah, I, I love I, Second I can't City. Describe how. I, they throw out something and they start doing it. It's, it's the craziest stuff. You just right on the spot. Yes, it's so good, right? So we used to um, we would get together and how you practice for this is you do different games, right? So like one of the games we would play um, was a party game. And let me tell you the story. This is really naughty, Gary. Uh-oh. Okay, shut off the lights. No, no, no. This no. is good. This is good. I'll keep it PG ish. I was in high school. We were going to state for improv, right? So they give you like a topic. You know, you act it out, whatever. Um, and I was in a group with three other people. And um, anytime a sports team goes to state, they have a big thing in the auditorium, mm-hmm. like this big send off. Yeah. And it's like a big to do. So they're like, well, we're going to do it for the theater kids, really? which I think was really cool. Yeah. Right. And so they had us come up on stage and they asked us how we prepare. And we said, well, we'd love to show you how we do this. We um, we play a game. It's called a party game. So, like, let's say you, Gary, are. um the party host, right? You go off stage. The rest of us pick characters for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so um, at the time, I think like one of us had chosen Mr. T. And you've got to act like that character until the party host can guess who you are. Okay? Mm-hmm. And so that was just like you would just be ridiculous and have fun. So somebody was Mr. T. I don't remember who the other person was. And then I was a naughty girl in high school, and I chose Monica Lewinsky. You know, this was um, early two thousands, and I have dating a few myself? questions, but I got to be careful. You got to be real delicate. What color was your dress? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> so when we got there, I was like, "Oh, do you like my blue dress? Yeah. I think I got some dip on it." Yeah. It was really inappropriate, and our superintendent was oh, sitting there, no. and he was just livid, right? Yeah, I bet. And um, and the people in the audience gave us these characters, so we asked them who should we be, and they would yell out names, and somebody yeah. said Mon- So it really wasn't my fault, Carrie. Like. I am innocent in yeah. this whole thing, right? <laughs> you were just um, acting out, right? Right. And I was like, oh, I got dip on my dress. Does anybody have a cigar? I was completely inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but you it, got some people, laughs, did you? Oh, people were rolling. <laughs> and I was laughing, but I don't think they do that send off anymore. Maybe yeah. we've kind of ruined that you for people. That. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it a funny wild. thing about uh, comedians. Uh, yeah. If you think about most comedians, they're very sharp. Well, yes. They're very quick. Yes, you've got to be, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Because, and, and, I like humor because the good ones pick on everybody. Completely. They, You've got they to. pick on themselves. And they if you can't on... laugh about yourself, are you even living? Yeah, why even? I mean, just treat Completely. it as it's, it's, it's comedy. They're just trying to it, it yes. loosen up, Leroy, yes. is kind of what and I would say. And the whole say. point is to kind of push things a little bit, yeah. too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, just to be, yeah. like, a little bit or maybe a lot yeah. inappropriate, and yeah. I love that. And a lot of comedians have had a lot of uh, tragedy in their lives. Look at Robin Williams. Yes, yes. Depression, anxiety, and the things that he fought, the demons. Oh, my gosh. He was incredible. He was, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mork and Mindy? Yes. How funny was oh that? Oh, my God. That show was hysterical. I mean, nanu, Nanu, was it? The, I don't know what <laughs> yes, he, how he did. he did do the Nanu. I don't know if I could do that on my <laughs> right hand. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was a yeah, great show. Yeah, he was incredible. But, yeah, a lot of... Um, you know, it's ironic. My therapist always says, oh, Whitney, you do such a great job of using humor to get through life. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you got to laugh or you're yeah. going to cry, yeah, you know? So, so more about Mount Vernon. What a great town. Yeah, Cornell. I love it so much. Cornell's uh, fantastic. Cutest little main street of mm-hmm. all time. Great little restaurants and shops. If you ever have time to do a day trip, check it out. I love it. Lincoln Lincoln um, Way. The Lincoln Wine Bar. Oh, man, that place that is pizza? the jam. Yeah, it's so if you've good. you've not been up there to eat. I mean, it's, it's so good, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then you used the chalk the walk. Did you, you get yes, out there and color the walk? The chalk or? the walk. You know, I'm not that much of an artist when it comes to chalk. I'd probably embarrass myself, but there's some really talented people. And their little community does um, cool things like they do a chili cook off, they mm. do a chocolate walk, mm. they do all kinds of fun stuff. You know, yeah. we had heritage days growing up, which is like your little carnival, right? 
They had a big bingo tent you could go play bingo in. Cool. Oh, I, I haven't it. quite got into that yet, but I'm getting into that age. Oh, I <laughs> love I've loved bingo since childhood. It is my right. jam. I yeah. think it's so fun. It is fun. So so you grow up. Uh, let's go back to drama and, yeah. and uh, uh, comedians. Yeah. How has that helped you today in oh. your world of real? Let's talk about real estate a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. Or just in life. Your background, how's that helped you? Because don't you feel as a real estate, you're oh, on stage? All the time. You At know. the end of the day, after a bunch of showings, I'm exhausted. Yep. I'm like cashed, right? Because yep. I feel like it's a performance, it right? It is. Um, how you move, how you talk, yeah, how you act. Yeah, and you kind of have this sort of script, mm-hmm. right? So that you that you sort of tell everybody. Like I go through my whole spiel and right. I'm like, you know, this is your world. I'm just living in it. I'm here right. to give you the information. Right. You make the decisions. Right. And I and it, you just kind of shift as it goes. So talk about improv. That kind of comes along well, and it all changes too as you educate yourself and you learn about different houses and things. But yeah, you definitely have a script, and it's a total performance. But I think that's one of the things that like um, has attracted clients to me is because I just like to have a good time oh, while yeah. we're doing it. Right. Yeah. That's the key. Do you think we should do a real estate play? I mean, um, I know I they did one to. way think, back when. Yeah, and at the end we can all cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd, I can think of some characters we could have, but I just oh. be, I don't know who'd come to it, though. Would we have an audience? I think we would. I mean, I think every realtor would come <laughs> they'd, to they'd it to come laugh probably. and yeah. get, a, get a rise out of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I see a lot of these really funny, like, real estate TikToks that are cracking me yeah. up lately, yeah. you know? Um, what no, do you think, I think of technology totally... in real estate? What's going on with when it used to be? when oh, I yeah. can remember doing showings at a house. You had to use the phone to yes. call the next... For the yes. next showing, you go pick up the key and then... It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so I started when, when things were pretty digital, right? And, right. They, I mean, they've gotten even more so. I think the pandemic really pushed us to another level, right? Um, social media, that's a whole thing. You guys are killing it on social media. I think Urban Acres is doing a great job. Yeah. That's where I'm at. And yeah. um, uh, I think they do a great job. I personally don't feel like I'm doing the best job at my social media. It's a lot of work. But I think I think that we to need me, to start the Whitney Russell podcast right now. You think so? Let's commit. What to am it I going right to talk now. about? Whatever. Just Community life. events. Just yeah, yeah. Just life in general. Whatever. Yeah, you I want. love that. I'll talk about everything. Everything Iowa City. I feel like you're already doing it, Gary. <laughs> We're already living it. I'm just going to come up with ideas for you and okay, send them good, your way. perfect. Um, no, I uh, technology and real estate's incredible. You know, you don't have to do paper stuff mostly right. anymore. It's dot all loop. dot loop. You do it all online. Your showings even, you don't have to make phone calls and set up showings. I remember I would sit and schedule showings as an assistant in the beginning, and um, I had to sit down and figure out what was the best route and um, what time to do it and how long in between houses and stuff like that. And now you can go into showing time. You put in all the ones you want to do. You click Smart Route. It'll route them for you, and then it'll, it'll schedule them all for you. It'll call the clients. It'll text my client and say, can we show your house? It's incredible. So AI has hit real estate. Oh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I don't know, man. That makes me really nervous. I think it's strange I, stuff. Well, to me, it's kind of like uh, <laughs> Zillow, right? Zillow's never been in your home. They right. don't know the local market. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had lunch with an appraiser the other day, and they were telling me that you know she has was having trouble appraising a property. Well, the 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 agent was not of this area, and they were using comps on the other side of town. You have got to have local people that understand the area, and this property is going to sell different than this property, right? It's going to sell to a different clientele. It's going to demand more money, the condition, all of these things. You really need somebody that knows the area, right? And I just don't – I don't know. I guess we would have to be really far into AI for it to replace a realtor, in my opinion. So you still need real estate agents, right? Absolutely. You still have to have somebody guide. You can look on your phone. Yes. You can do Zillow, Realtor.com. And but as you a still buyer, need that personal contact, right? Yes. And as a buyer, why wouldn't you? You know, the, the majority of the time, me as an agent, I get paid um, when I sell a house, right? So I, I get paid when I, uh, like a seller, will pay a commission to the buyer's agent. And there's um, some big discussions about this at NAR right now, right? But um, as a buyer, you're not paying, you know, out of pocket to have somebody help you. And I think um, we're here to educate people and to help them and give them our experience. We're not here to pressure people into crazy things. Mm -hmm. Find an agent that you like, that you feel connected to, right? And then roll from there. There's a lot of good agents in this town Mm -hmm. that I really enjoy. I mean, there's turds everywhere you go and that's every business that you have, right? Um, and they gotta make it hard on us, man. There's no reason to be mean in this business. Right. We're all trying to do the same thing. 
I'm just trying to live my life and be happy, Gary. Tell me how blessed we are to be selling real estate in Johnson County. Oh, my God, this place is incredible, isn't we, we, it? I, I think we take it for granted. But totally. It's, we got the University of Iowa. We got the docks coming it's in and out. It's a constant cycle, all right? All the time. Yes. So it creates a, a, a tremendous market, a tremendous mm-hmm. need. We're it, in a precious yeah. bubble. Even when, like, big things happen, like in 2008, really, yeah. property values did Didn't not go down. Go down. No. no. It kind of stayed and that Correct, flat, correct. And even now, you know, you see big volatile markets. Like, my folks have a condo in Florida that they're looking to sell. Hugely volatile, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so you really have to, to be careful there. But here, it's it's a constant, steady increase. Um, and I really do think that's because of the university and the amount of people coming in and out, um, those residents that are coming to live here and things like that. And, and you probably the see that. North Liberty, Tiff, and yes. so on. Yes, yeah, such good towns. Horrible. It's just in the last 15, 20 years, especially the last five to 10, it's well, went nuts around here. Well, and you guys have had a lot yeah. to do with that. I mean, your development's off the rails. You guys yeah. are really growing, but you're. You're building like really quality products, in right. my opinion. And well, appreciate um, that. We, we oh, try. my gosh, Gary, we built our our uh, last house yeah. with you guys, right. um, and it was fantastic. I ran into somebody the other day, and they said, "Hey, you had a parade house in the peninsula," and I was like, "How do you remember yeah. that?" It's amazing. You, it's incredible. Well, I always tell our guys, you know, we have a, a really good callback. Uh, we have folks that just, you know, pay attention to mm-hmm. when people have issues. And I think that's important on new construction. Make sure you take care of the customer. But yeah. I always tell them, I don't want to be in high V. Yeah. Going down the fruit aisle or whatever. I'm looking yes. for blueberries. And I go, oh, somebody comes up to me upset about, well, you didn't come back and fix this door. Yeah. So I always tell the guys, I don't want to get in high V. I just want to smile yep. and buy yes. something and get out. And I will say, <laughs> I have, um, I have sold a lot of new construction homes and i think your warranty process yeah. is top notch right. well we we pay attention to it so you guys have good people good. yeah good great people. people yeah let's go back to iowans i kind yeah. of oh. skip around you know i have I've, i can't stay on one subject too long but it's okay so if you if you know and here's the way i look at it and, and chime in on this you know i travel a little more than i used to yeah i like good to travel you. but i love to come home and oh I love Iowa, it's and so I love good. the people. It's so and good. I, and, and there's something about the vibe of just good, solid people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, and, and I hate to say this, uh, I don't know if I'd say normal or not, but but they're just good values, good ethic. It's like yeah. you're riding down the road, you have a flat. Somebody's going to probably stop and help you fix it. Yes. What is that about Iowa? Tell I don't me know. More. This is the most precious state to me. Um, I also love to travel, and. Uh, I, I just have a hard time thinking if I want to live somewhere else. It's so comfortable yeah. here. The living is so easy. You can yeah. drive anywhere, right? right? Um, you can walk anywhere. We have all four seasons. So, like, you get yeah. to appreciate, like, the sledding and the skiing mm-hmm. in the winter time. You know, our hills aren't that big, but we make do. Um, but I think uh, I do. I love the people so much because, in general, you – you go to the grocery store and you look somebody in the eye and they will smile at you. Right. They and don't talk just to ignore you. you. Yeah, they'll talk to yeah. you. Like, or wave at you. Like we're car. friends. Yeah. You're out in farm area. You go, hey, the farm will wave at you. You go, what do you want? Yes, I totally. Want totally. You just, you just wave at people. Yeah. You know, and if you're neighbors with somebody, they have no qualms about just coming up and introducing themselves. Right. And right. Um, I, I feel like you can ask your neighbors for anything, right. you know, and people will help you. This snowstorm is a, is a good example, yeah. right? It was crazy. We had all this snow, and um, somebody from our company reached out and to us and said, hey, I've got somebody that lives in Manville Heights, but they're, they have a disability, and they can't scoop all this snow. Do you have a good recommendation of a snow care company that could, could help her? And my husband said, I'll go do it this time for her um, until she can find somebody. Mm. So he went down with a couple of buddies, and he um, did all the snow removal, took his snowblower down, all of that. They were down there, and they saw this elderly woman next door who was struggling with her snow removal. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, we can't just leave her there. Mm-hmm. So they marched over, and they cleared her snow, too. They come home with a box of chocolates that this woman gave them. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we got chocolates. And I was like, I'm so proud of you boys. <laughs> they were yeah. like little kids. But, you know, you see somebody that needs help, and you help them. Yeah, you talk about snow removal. I was going home in that horrible, what was that? But a few weeks ago, yes, that I blizzard, thought, total nightmare. I got around the curb anyway. It's a long. Uh, I get around the curb and I see some ladies in the ditch, and a couple yeah. other guys are already there helping. So yeah. I kind of stopped, said, "Hey, you need any other?" And he said, "Come on." So uh, they got her back in the car, and then the three of us got behind and pushed it out. 
See, that's and, and, Iowan. Yeah, it's Iowa, and, and I didn't do that much. They'd already done most of the work, but here's the point. And the it, humble thing is Iowa, yeah, too. Yeah, go on. <laughs> but anyway, she's an ER nurse. Yeah. And I was driving home. That's I awesome. Go, well, that's so cool because I'm sure she's going in to help other people, and that's her job. Yes, it's and a domino stopped, effect. What, what would happen if we didn't get her out? Right. Right, She's, people need her. Yeah, they need her, and she was so appreciative. Yeah, you can't put a you can't put a price on it. it no, you know we've got University of Iowa here. We got tertiary care. We it's are the best. living it. If you have an emergency, a medical emergency, yes. where else do you want to go? Correct, correct. If you have a baby that's premature, where else do you want to go? The correct. NICU at the University of Iowa. Correct. You have that cosmopolitan influence of so many people, professors and mm-hmm. docs and whatever they hear. Here's another interesting thing. That, that I see, and I'm, I'm sure you have, is in physicians or people come, professors come in from other parts of the country, their initial thought, oh, we're coming to Iowa. <laughs> yeah, totally. Or, or we're coming to Iowa City. Well, what's, and they don't even, they've never heard of it, or they think it's Idaho. Yeah, totally. Idaho, Potatoes. Ohio, Hawaii. Yeah. Finally, I go, no, it's Iowa. Come on. Yeah. But, uh, and they think it's, you know, hogs and cattle and cornfields. Yeah, and yeah. They get here and they love it. And a it lot of them would never leave. It is an incredible place to raise a family. That's Gary. what they all say, and they yeah. want their kids here to grow up in this environment. Mm-hmm. Our school systems. What better school systems do we you have? We are living it. We are living in it. the state of Iowa. I think yes. Iowa and Wisconsin, the the skills, the, the grades, and the. Well, I but, even think about just locally here. Like you know, my kids go to daycare, and a lot of people that work there are people that are going into elementary education at the university. They're getting all of these people that have the experience and stuff. I mean, you're just, we're living it here. Right, we really right. are. And there is so much to do in this town. It's incredible. Right. The amount of community theater, professional theater at Hampshire yeah. is incredible. As a theater junkie, I feel like we can do everything here. Right. Um, and then I also think somebody with kids, there's always something to do. Our libraries are fantastic. Yes. The Children's Museum. Oh. Don't even get me started on that That's place. amazing. It's the jam. It's wild. It's so good. Yeah. And... Um, you know, that we have a lot of human service organizations. I learned, um, even in Johnson County, when I did the community leadership program through the chamber many moons Was ago. Was that a good one? Fantastic. You recommend it? Ten years ago I did it. It it changed my life. It made me see it sort of changed the trajectory. It made me see like, oh, I don't I don't know that I want to be in banking anymore. I think I want to do something else. And then, and then I got into real estate and um it's like a lifestyle. It's not a job. I'm just living right, it, right? right? But the stuff to do on the weekends, I mean, you can go out to farms with your kids, mm-hmm. the pumpkin patch, mm-hmm. um, colonies, you know, Kroll Farm, Col- Colony That's in North blast. Liberty. Kroll Farm's the bomb. Yeah. Um, and great people that own it, yeah. right? And, and they're all like kind people that yeah. want your family mm-hmm. to come there. And you have all these activities and you can learn the Iowa State Fair. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, you can take your kids there and they can learn all kinds of things. Ford loves it. He thinks farming is the coolest thing ever. And I'm like, yeah, it is hard work and it is a science. Have you taken him to Palisades Kepler Park? No, I need to. It's beautiful. I grew up there. You know, it's not too far from Mount Vernon and it is awesome. In fall, it's it's seeing the cliffs. Yes, it's beautiful, right? (laughs) Anything in nature is good for Mm -hmm. kids. And Mm -hmm. the summers here are awesome. Um, I personally love the humidity. I think it's really good for my curly hair. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just beautiful in the summer. I'm glowing. Um, you know, you can go swimming. You've got all kinds of stuff. The lakes, you can go fishing. It's a hoot. McBride. Yes. The whole thing. So good. Yeah. Tell us about volunteering. I know mm. you're, let's talk about I, okay. where can people volunteer? What can they give to? And oh my gosh, there's so many organizations. There are. Um, so I, I feel like my husband and I are maybe a little out of control with the volunteering. We need to dial it back. I personally, right now, am just on the Friends of the Animal Center Foundation. I'm the president of that board. Ben Russell is like an extraordinaire, and he sits on the board of directors for the Iowa Children's Museum, mm. um, which is an incredible organization, Learning Through Play. Um, he sits. He just came off the board for Iowa City Hospice, a beautiful organization, very needed. Um, and he was on that for like, I think, six years. It was kind of crazy. Um, he's on the board of directors for the Four C's, which is like affordable child care, very needed right now. Yeah. It's, it's like I could buy another house with how much I pay for child care. Yeah, um I don't know how people are affording this. It's wild. And then uh, he's also on the board for Habitat for Humanity, Mm -hmm. which is also a fantastic organization. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows about that. So, um, yeah, I think to me, I get more from volunteering than I give. And I think that every person can feel that way. If you're having a hard time in life 
and you're really feeling down, I think you should go volunteer. How can you be upset if you're volunteering? Correct. How can you be upset if you're giving back? Mm -hmm. You can't be. The absolute joy that you will feel in giving back and, and doing something beautiful for someone. I had the opportunity yesterday to go um, with a friend of mine to visit the birdhouse of, of Johnson oh, County. Yeah, that's amazing. And so oh, this Linda is an Road. organization. It's a beautiful home mm -hmm. that people can go in their last days of life if they're on hospice. So it's not hospice. It's just a home they can go live mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. until they pass away. It is gorgeous. It is beautiful. It was like I went in there and I just felt good vibes. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful place to be. Um, and so like out there, you can, you can go on their website, you can volunteer to bring meals out there to, to feed people that are living there or their families. You could even bring cookies out there to them. You know, that to me was beautiful. And they were telling me a story about a man that was, that was dying and he was there and he loved horses. He loved them so much. So somebody took it upon themselves to go get a horse in a trailer, drove it out there, opened the window like Mr. Ed. So that horse could stick his head in mm. and let that man pet him. Mm. I mean, like you tell me that if you did that for somebody, you wouldn't get more out of it than that man did, right? You know, in a hospice care, I know they came. Uh, a lady came to my, saw my dad in a nursing yeah. home. She sang a song, had a guitar, and they brought pet. They brought dogs in. And do you have? Mm -hmm. If you've not seen that. Mm -hmm. the joy that that brings them it's yeah. beyond you can't even talk about it. it's pure therapy and just a sweet song she just was singing to them and they yeah. talk and they talk about their childhoods and they go way back to yeah. 80 90 years or whatever back to when they're little that's kids that's beautiful that's beautiful but they, but they right? don't rather you don't want to pass in, in a hospital generally no you can go home and be around like like the horse or the yes. pets or, or somebody have singing a song and they've got a dog that's in there all the time the yeah. house manager um yeah. that i met I think Denise was her name. She was so lovely. She has this little Shih Tzu mix. Um, Pixie is her name, and Pixie will go and like <laughs> rest on the bed with the with the patients. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, another thing that's just a gem. I don't know if we appreciate it's a Ronald McDonald House. Oh man, think that about place if one is... of your kids had its cancer or whatever they have, mm -hmm. and they're at the hospital. You come roaring in here. You're from a little town yes. in Iowa. Yes, you have nowhere to stay, where to go, and it's right next to the hospital, mm -hmm. a few blocks away. Yeah, and there's no charge. Yes, they just, and, and it doesn't matter come... what your economics is. Yeah, they just I, take care of people. They're amazing, and people will come. Like I think, um, you know, at least once a year, I know people from some people from Urban Acres will go over and mm -hmm. make a meal there. It's a great team bonding thing if you're working yeah. at a company and you're looking for something cool to do. Yeah. I think uh, it's a total warm fuzzy, right. and I'm living for the warm fuzzies, right. Gary. And they got other kids that come, and they got a little playground there because their siblings might be sick. Yes. And then what do you do with the other kids that are, are not sick? And, Correct. And, and and the amount of food and uh, what it costs, to, you know, that's a great place to give to, the yes. Ronald McDonald House. So, yes. Well, listen, we could go all day. Gary, I love I'm, this. I'm <laughs> – we got to do a play. That's our I, next I, thing. Our next thing is to, and, to put together a play. You got to come back and we'll do more of this. Oh my is God, this I fun? know. This is great. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is so legit yeah. with your sign and yeah, everything. I feel great. really cool. So, anyway, thanks a lot, Whitney. Yeah, great thank you so you. much. Have a great I appreciate day. it. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. Thanks.